In this video, we're going to study disaccharides, um, how monosaccharides come together to form disaccharides, and the name of the bond that connects those disaccharides together. So that when you see names of disaccharides and see the bond that's connecting them, you'll understand what the, all those numbers and alpha and beta and all that stuff means when you look at it. So here we have two monosaccharides, and disaccharides are formed by connecting two monosaccharides together. And those two monosaccharides could be different or they could be the same. It doesn't really matter. Now, disaccharides are these bonds that connect two sugars together or two monosaccharides together are really formed in the same way. And they connect a carbon of one sugar to a hydroxyl group, essentially, on another sugar. And you can see from these two monosaccharides, there's a lot of hydroxyl groups, and each of the sugars I have shown here have six carbons. So there's a lot of possible combinations that can be formed to make a disaccharide. So a lot of different choices there. Any carbon with any hydroxyl group. And so let's go ahead and take a look. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to number um, these, each of these sugars because we're going to be using those numbers in the naming. So... Um, the anomeric carbon gets the lowest number possible. This is my anomeric carbon there. That's carbon 1. There's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And on the sugar on the right-hand side, that's the anomeric carbon. That's carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect the number 1 carbon on the left-hand sugar to the number 4 carbon on the right-hand sugar uh, through the hydroxyl groups. So when we connect two, two sugars together, in that process, a molecule of water is lost. And water, of course, is two hydrogens and one oxygen. So we need to steal two hydrogens and one oxygen from these structures. So where do we steal them from? Well, since I'm going to connect the one carbon on the left-hand side to the four carbon on the right-hand side, I'll be using these hydroxyl groups to steal the molecule of water. So I need two hydrogens. Well, that's great because I have two hydrogens on those hydroxyl groups, so let me erase those. And just want to make sure I try to be careful there not to erase too much. And I'm going to steal one oxygen. It doesn't really matter which one I take. In the end, I'm going to be left with one. Since I partially erased this one, I'm just going to go ahead and steal that guy. And what happens then is now a new bond is formed between that oxygen and that carbon number four. And I can get rid of that little bond there. Now a lot of times, so what so what we have the connection point between these two sugars is this carbon one is connected to the oxygen and that oxygen is connected to the carbon. So the bond is carbon one, oxygen, carbon four, and we've connected them together. Now many times once this is drawn, the only reason that oxygen is way over there on the left-hand side is because that's where I drew it to begin with. But really, when you see disaccharides many times, you don't see it drawn like the way I just had it. You see, typically, the oxygen's more centered between the two, and the bonds are made from that oxygen to each of the carbons. So that's more typically what we see. So the products in this case, when we connect these two together, are the disaccharide plus the molecule of water. So those are the products of a, of a connection. It doesn't matter which carbon you used on either of them to connect together because all those carbons, each of the carbons has a hydroxyl group attached to it. The only one that wouldn't work is carbon 5 really because well, it doesn't really have a hydroxyl, it doesn't have a hydroxyl group directly attached to it. It's a little bit difficult to attach to carbon number 5. But any other carbons would work and any other hydroxyl groups would work as well and we could connect those together. So when we connect them together we have to kind of distinguish between which ones did I connect together. And so now we're going to kind of name these and so I'll show you kind of how the naming is done. So this bond, so this molecule we have here is an alpha 1, 4 glycosidic bond. That's the bond we just made. Glycosidic means uh, we have a connection between two, two sugars in this case. Uh, glycosidic does have a more general name than that, or more general use than just connecting sugars, but at this point we can just call them it's glycosidic bond that's formed there. 
So that's the bond we just made. That's shown in green in the structure. So that's our glycosidic bond. It's called alpha because this sugar on the left here was in the alpha anomeric configuration. Um, I know this, and you can go back. I have, a pre I have another video that talks about anomers, so if you're not quite clear on that and you want to be more clear, go look at the video. But I know it's alpha because this group is up, and the OH on the anomeric carbon right here was down. It's gone now. You don't really see it as an OH anymore. But I know it was down because this hydrogen is up, so therefore the OH must have been down. And you can see that by this bond right here, that the O is going downwards, so that is down. So because the OH was down on the anomeric carbon and the CH2OH on uh, part of carbon-6 is up, uh, that's alpha. So we, we basically tell you the anomer the alpha tells you the uh, isomeric form of the sugar on the, the first sugar, or the sugar on the left. The 1 means that on the sugar on the left in our drawing, or the first sugar in the line, is connected by its carbon number 1. The 4 means on the second sugar, that's the connection point of it. It's on carbon number 4. And so this tells you, this alpha 1,4 tells you the connection between the two sugars. It's connecting the 1 and 4 sugars, and the first um, uh, sugar, the sugar on the left, is in the alpha configuration. Sometimes the alpha beta designation is not necessary if you are not connecting to the anomeric carbon. So on the one on the right, the anomeric carbon is the one carbon, so therefore it can exist in both the alpha and beta forms. The version I have showing here is in the beta form, but it could flip to the alpha form just as easily while that glycosidic bond is attached, so therefore we don't always tell you or don't need to tell you whether it's in the alpha or beta configuration. Only if you're really attaching to the anomeric carbon do you need to designate whether it's alpha or beta. Because once connected in a, in a glycosidic bond, the, uh, the sugar cyclical ring structure is locked and cannot open up and, and, and change into the beta form or vice versa. If the anomeric carbon is not in a glycosidic bond, like I have an arrow pointing to over here on the right, then uh, that one can open and close. And so while this disaccharide is formed, that beta configuration can open into the li li linear conformation and then re recyclize into the alpha form, open up, recyclize back into the beta form, and back and forth. So let's go ahead and I'll show you another example of this uh, just to kind of strengthen our understanding. So for this example, let's make a beta-1 Alpha, whoops, alpha one glycosidic bond. Okay, so we're going to make those two. We're going to make that connection. And so the first thing we want to do is we're going to first number each of the sugars just so we can get our carbons right because we're going to need the one carbon on each of them. And remember, we start with the anomeric carbon as it must get the lowest number possible. And so this is carbon 1 right there, carbon 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. On the structure on the right, it's twisted and turned a little bit, but here is our anomeric carbon, so that's carbon 1. There's 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6 is right there. So that's our connection point. We're going to want to connect the uh, one carbon on each of them. Notice that the carbon, the sugar on the left, the OH right here on the uh, number one carbon or the anomeric carbon is up. The CH2OH is up. They're both up, so that's beta. And then on the sugar on the right, the OH on the anomeric carbon is down. The CH2OH is up. One's up and one's down. That's alpha. So each sugar is in the correct uh, uh, isomeric form. So now we just need to connect them together, and remember to do so, we need to get rid of a molecule of water. So we're going to do that with the hydroxyl groups attached to the carbons we're connecting. So we're, we're connecting carbon 1 on each of them. So up here at the top, I'm going to go ahead and take a hydrogen away, 
and we're going to take the hydrogen away down there. So that's the two hydrogens we're going to lose. And we need to lose a molecule of oxygen, or I'm sorry, an atom of oxygen. I'll just take the one from down here. That's all right. And so now we just need to connect everybody together. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to move uh, this oxygen up the top here, the one that's left. I'm just going to move that a little bit to center it. I'm not going to take it away. I'm just going to center it. So let me get a marker here and center that. I'm just going to put it right in the middle. And then we're going to connect those two together. And notice it looks a little funkier than the last time, but that's all right. We're just connecting the two together. And so again, the connection, the glycosidic bond here that we made is still the same. Uh, it is a carbon attached directly to an oxygen attached to another carbon of a second ring. So there's only one atom between those two. It's just the oxygen atom sitting between those two rings. Even though that's a really long bond we have there and it's all curvy and everything, that's just a bond. It just looks funky the way we're drawing it. It would normally be very close, just like any other bond. It wouldn't be all curved and things like that. It's just the way we're drawing it makes it look all curved. So don't be confused by that long bond that I have there and it's all curvy. This is the way you see it. Uh, when we connect bonds or, or, or carbons where one hydroxyl group was up and the other one is down, it looks like this S-shaped thing. Uh, when they're both on one side, it looks more like a U-shaped or V-shaped. If the hydroxyl groups were on the top side, it would look like uh, an upside-down V. Um, but that's okay. It's just trying to connect everybody together in a two-dimensional space. Realize these are really, in nature, three-dimensional, so you don't have that same look. But notice here we have connected them together. It's a 1-1 glycosidic bond. We've connected the two carbons labeled 1 together through a glycosidic bond. We could, so these are disaccharides. So now I, I hope it helps you to understand that when you see sucrose, and they tell you about the bond connecting the disaccharides to, or the two monosaccharides together, they will sometimes tell you it's an alpha 1 beta 2 glycosidic bond. Um, if they were talking about lactose, another disaccharides, that's connected in an alpha-1-4 glycosidic bond. Um, and so again, this tells you, now you hopefully you understand a little bit more what those numbers mean. Uh, they tell you about the carbons that are connected in each of the sugars and the isomeric form that they take on.